My uh, technology doesn't want to work for me. Can you believe that? Uh, come on up. All right, we can read Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time we have to be together. Lord, we're so thankful for your blessings, and they are so many. Lord, I pray that you would encourage our hearts to be thankful, to be grateful. And Lord, as we see in this psalm, that you are the one we need to go to in our time of need, in our time of help. And Lord, help us to do just that, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, I don't know if you have it on your in your Bible. A lot of Bibles have different descriptions of the psalms. Uh, so, this one uh, in mine says, God, the help of those who seek him. And then underneath that, it says, a song of degrees. Does anyone else have a Song of Degrees, written a couple of us, okay? So, the Song of Degrees is a description of when this song would be sung the most, okay? And that was uh, during three annual feasts in the Jewish uh, calendar, Passover, Pentecost, and in the Feast of the Tabernacles. That means that th this psalm would be sung in those pilgrimages to to Jerusalem from wherever you were. And we have to think about, too, is that when they went on these pilgrimages, it wasn't that all the roads were safe either. Like, this, they didn't have police mounted or whatever patrolling the land. This was There was a degree of uh, fear. It could be a degree of a chance of robbery and things. So they're looking for God to protect them as they go as well. Now, verse 1 is not a declaration of hope, Rather, it's one of cry and despair because the, the hills, uh, they're not going to protect me. Uh, who likes to look at mountains? Anyone here like to look at mountains? I love looking at mountains. Uh, I, can, I like looking, scrolling through pictures of mountains and different things. and They're beautiful. The psalmist is not looking to the hills to help him face his problems. Because what can a hill do when I have a problem at work? Right? I mean, I can look at it. I can admire it. But it's not helping me at work. No, it, no he, he, the psalmist is, tell, is, is talking lots of chances, opportunities for those weary travelers as they're heading down to Jerusalem or they're heading out of Jerusalem, going through mountain or hills uh, for robbers and thieves. Uh, and, and so when those troubles come, these pilgrims turn to look to God to help. And it's for us as well. We need to do that because we're pilgrims, aren't we? If we know Christ as Savior, we are pilgrims in this world. This is not our home. It's not. And I'm so glad it's not. Our home is so much greater than this. You know, this is not our home. We are on the way. Uh, 1 Peter 2.11, Dearly uh, beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against our soul. Our pilgrimage began at the moment we received Jesus Christ as our Savior and will continue until we take our step into eternity. Uh, when... Uh, I was preaching for Pastor Luke Higgs in Nova Scotia last week, and we got in on Saturday. And Saturday morning, he did a funeral for a guy in his church. His name was Wayne. Wayne is the most encouraging fellow you could ever meet. And if you were thinking like stereotypical Nova Scotian, Wayne was it. I mean, just he was friendly and you know, good personality and always cracking a joke and made you feel like a million bucks. You know, that was just the way. And, you know, he passed away a few days before, obviously. That's when his pilgrimage ended. You'll get to meet Wayne one day. You know, the reality is God is God's plan that we'll be pilgrims. And one day the pilgrimage will end. It will be done. And think of all the glories uh, that are in heaven. Uh, and it won't it be thrilling to see all the loved ones who've gone on before us. It'll make, it'll be a, it's going to be a wonderful reunion. And, and, and no more sin. 
No more colds. No more flu. All those things are gone forever. Never again. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. Like, I will never be sick again. Uh, that's amazing. And overwhelming joy, obviously. There are great, wonderful side effects or benefits. Plus to see Jesus. That's the greatest. Uh, but we're not there yet. Right? We're not there yet. And along the way, we're going to face all kinds of dangers that are lurking around. Uh, there, there's going to be those who want to steal our joy, right? And, there's, uh, and be thieves. And then there's there's uh, sins that we have to quench with the Lord's help. Because we, we're still flesh. Yes, we're on the way to heaven, but we're still flesh. we got to fight against. Uh, and we need to make sure that we are bringing honor and glory to the Lord as we go. So the source of the hope, my hope cometh. From the Lord, not the hills, the hills won't help me, but from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The psalmist knew that that his help couldn't come from the hills. Um, I never really thought about this until I was studying this out. Um, but in the day that this was written, the hills were a place of idolatry. You read the Old Testament and you see lots of places where you know, outside the city, you know, in the groves and on the hilltops. That's where they did idolatrous worship. The writer knows that he'll not find any help in that which is false. Whatever God it was that they had up there, that he wouldn't help. No, no idols, no heathen of God is going to offer any help or help to him. Five times in this psalm, uh, the, uh, the psalmist identifies the helper as the Lord, and that's Yahweh. The covenant name of God, which means self-existent, he's eternal, he's unchanging, who is overall. He's dem- he, he, the, the psalmist is writing it out. This is who it is. There's no one greater than God, than the Lord, Yahweh. And, and he identifies him. This is my God. And the psalmist refused to look to the gods of false religion to help. Because there are no help. You know, uh, Psalm 115, let me read you this a few verses verse number four their idols are silver and gold the work of men's hands you just think about it, the idols in our world they're by man's hands isn't that crazy you build it then you worship it right they have mouths but they speak not ears have they and not he's referring to what's been made so these figures have been made and eyes they see not the ears they hear not noses have they but they smell not they have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they, though, through their throat. They don't have anything. You know, um, we look around Brampton, Peel, you know, we see lots of idols. I mean, I'm talking about what David's talking about. People have created on the sides of some of the uh, temples and things. They're idols. That's what they are. Let's, let's be honest. Let's be truthful. And they have all those things. Some of them have multiple mouths. Some of them have multiple eyes. Um, on multiple arms or feet. Doesn't make it change that they can't walk anywhere. Right? The, the one and true and living God. He turns, his, the psalmist turns his attention to the Lord. The Lord will help me. He's the real source of help for us each and every day. Um, look to the creator. He does, the psalmist doesn't look to the creation to help. He's asked the hills, right? That's the mountain. Beautiful. Maybe see a big moose or a big deer or whatever. Beautiful. But they can't help me. The Lord, the Creator, can help me. One helper, uh, uh, you know, or He's the helper that we need to look to. He's the one who stood, the Creator, stood over nothing and created everything. Everything. You know, it's, I think sometimes we forget how amazing our God is. And this world is just a little tiny speck compared to the universe He's created. It's amazing. I love, I've found this verse in the Word, Isaiah 40, verse 12. Who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. I don't get much water in my hollow of my hand. But I, he measured it in his hand. And he meted out heaven with the span. And comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. And weighed the mountains and scales and hills and abounds. Like, amazing God. That's our God. He's the source of our help. 
we won't find the help we need in the world around us. And I'm telling you, a lot of people are looking for help. But we'll find the help is in the Lord. That's where we'll find the help. Uh, verse number three. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He keepeth thee, not, uh, the, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. But he, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So we, he, he helps us, he, he helps us not to slip. Help us not to fall. And, and this verse tells us he's not going to allow that to happen. God ha- he's there to help us. And, and he knows how easy it is for you and for me to slip into sin. Because we can slip into sin. And he, he knows how easy for us to slip into discouragement. And we can just get discouraged very quickly. He's there. He, he knows those things. And we need to understand that God has made a promise that he'll help us. He's there to sustain us. Well, what shall you then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Again, I say these things, and I think you know as a congregation or church that we're, we're not saying that God takes care of all, like in a sense, there's no problems. No, no, no. There's problems, but we can look to him to take care of them. He's greater than the problems. The problems help us grow, mature, and look to him more. If all we had was success, why would we look to God? We wouldn't. We'd just be like, I'm doing it myself. I don't need any help. I can do all this all by myself. I don't need the Lord. Oh, he's like a shadow. He's always with us. We're told the Lord is our keeper in verses 4 and 5, and, and then we're told the Lord will preserve us in verse 7 and 8. Actually, the same Hebrew word is, as keeper and preserve, is, it's just the one word. It's just the, they use it differ, differently. It means to watch, to keep, to observe, to guard, to have charge of. You think about a child who's under um, charge of an uh, individual, like I say, uncle and aunt, and watch over them. Uh, when we were at the conference, uh, there was a fella, uh, the O'Briens. We support the O'Briens. So his, Pastor O'Brien's father-in-law just retired from U.S. border services. So what he was doing was giving us an instructional time about how to approach the border and speaking to the officers. Super insightful. Like, I got to be honest, it was a great session and uh, just kind of helped us how to do it. And he said and he specifically stopped and said, listen, don't believe all the stories that when children are taken from the parents that the border guards treat them bad and just throw them in a room. type of thing." He said, and this is the idea of watching over. He said, we if the kids need to be taken into custody, like in sense of being guarded, you want the border people to watch over your kids. He said, we go get them toys. We go get them food. He said, whatever they want, we give it to them. We just watch it over. He said, no one's going to get them until everything's resolved. You know, our God's like that. He's watching over us. He cares more about us than a border guard that will give us everything. He's watching over his children. He takes care of us. He took that responsibility for you. He's like, I'm watching over you. And he's bringing us on that pilgrimage safely home. He's there watching over. That means we can count on him. Uh, the comforter helps us and assists us as we go through that travel. He who uh, helps us never sleeps. That's what the word tells us, never slumbers. Uh, he's just there all the time. Uh, well, I was talking to Dave uh, before the service, and we're talking about taking naps like we were little people. <laughs> okay. I was like, sometimes, you know, around 1.30, my eyes are like, mm, coming together. I pull back my seat for 15 minutes. I feel great again. I need that nap, that little, not every day, especially if I don't get coffee. Then I'm not, I'm not a nice guy at all if I have no coffee. But, you know, we, we need those. We need, we get weary. And if you don't need a nap during the day, you need a, you need a long, long one at night to get going, to be recharged. You know, I, I got some serious plans for naps this afternoon. You know, that's my plan, part of my plan today. He never grows weary. Our God never grows weary. He doesn't tire. He never falls asleep at the switch. And, you know, it's so easy for us to be distracted and forget to do something. He, he doesn't. There's no for. I, we don't have to worry about God watching over us. He's always going to do it. Uh, and I, I don't. I don't stay awake at night thinking, "Oh, does God care for me?" I know He does. So I shouldn't then stay awake if I have problems either, because God is with me. He cares for me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have like a week of sleepless nights because of, uh, problems or issues in my life. I should be looking to the Lord, Lord, help me. Take, 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 help me with this. Give me the, the wisdom or take away the problem, whatever it is. So back in the, uh, Second World War, 
the Germans were, you know, they bombed London a lot and uh, almost every night. And one night was terribly bad area of London. They really hit it hard. And so they would begin the process of searching for people, survivors. And unfortunately, people died in those events as well. And after a while, everyone in that neighborhood, because they would like to have neighborhood wardens and things, and they, they knew who, who was living where and things. They couldn't find Grandma Smith. Like, where's Grandma Smith? We can't find her. We've looked everywhere. Uh, and uh, like when they would hear the sirens, you're supposed to go to the bomb shelter, right? That was here. Okay, time to go to the bomb shelter. And uh, they're like, okay, well, let's look in our house. Like, thought they would find her passed away. And um, they walk in the house. They open up the bedroom door. Grandma Smith is cutting limber, a lumber in the bed. She's asleep. And they're like, wake her up. And like, Mrs. Smith, what are you doing? You, you Can you hear the drop, bomb dropping all night? And she said, well, the Bible says, that he who keeps Israel never slumbers nor sleep. I decided there was no use of both of us staying up, so I went to sleep. <laughs> and she lived. I mean, man, incredible. But I mean, that that's crazy story and humorous story, but it has a lot of application for us. We might be getting physical bomb dropped on us, but there is conflict. And if Grandma Smith says, you know what, I can trust God, he don't slumber or sleep. So could we. So should we. And then the imagery of the passage changed a little bit here. Now verse number five. Uh, the Lord is thy keeper. He, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. So it changes from the pilgrim walking to one who's fighting. That's the, the imagery changes. Uh, so, so we are pilgrims going through this world, but we also have to be understand we're going to be engaged with the enemy we have to fight we and our and our enemy is ruthless like he's looking for ways to destroy you he does not care he hates you he hates everybody but he hates us as believers and he's looking his one goal his greatest goal is total destruction and then secondary if you're saved you can't take our souls you can't destroy us that way is to destroy your testimony, destroy your, your, your Christian walk, your family, whatever, whatever you can do to cause chaos, because that's what enemies do, right? They're looking for ways to cause chaos. So that way the, you as the opposing force cannot bring all your forces to bear. And that's what he does. And the hills were, again, thieves and bandits were there to, to fight and take and, and destroy. This verse tells us, verse five, that, uh, the Lord is our shade upon the right hand. So in the ancient times, and that's obviously when this is written, warriors carried two items into battle. One was a sword and one was the shield. Normally the shield was on the left and the sword was on the right. All right, that's the way it normally was. And that meant the right side was vulnerable to attack. I mean, you can power a little bit, but it's not the same as the shield. So there was openings. So that meant the right side was vulnerable to attack and there's no shield to protect. So the psalmist tells us that God takes up a deliberate defensive position on our right side. Is that's where we are vulnerable. Now, that, that, think about that for a moment. That's amazing. We, we never know uh, where the attacks will come from. Sometimes we find ourselves attacked in areas that we're weak. And we tend to think that that's where the enemy will always hit us, where we're weak. Because it makes sense strategically to do that. But he can still attack us where we're strong. There's no reason why he wouldn't. There's times he, he's just looking for us to be off target, off focus. And if, even in our strong, if we're not serving the Lord or doing what we should be doing and following his will, our strong side is still weak and Satan will come after us or the enemy will be there. The whole point is that we will be attacked. It's going to happen. And we never know when the attack will come, but thankfully it's never a surprise to the Almighty. He knows and he cares. And he's always ready to provide us, uh, shield us and protect us. And in verse 6 talks about the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. So these are two possible sources of harm that could come were common to the soldiers of that year or that time period, I should say. One was sunstroke. Has anyone ever had sunstroke here? A couple of us? Me too. It's a dangerous thing, okay? Very dangerous. Uh, the body becomes overheated and shut down. Uh, when I was in Bible college, I worked at an inflatable company. So I would sew and put together 
these big inflatables that kids jump in and things of that nature. Um, it was a really fun workplace, actually, because you were doing all this different, different type of stuff. Uh, but during one summer, I got on board with the same company, Inflatable Rentals. So we would travel around Ontario. Actually, I went as far as almost Thunder Bay one time for a special rental for a community up there. Uh, but this one day on a Saturday, we were taking a bunch to a park. Uh, Magna Industries was having this big, they rent this big park. And we brought the inflatables for the kids to jump in all day long. But in the morning when we left, it was like actually kind of cool for that time of the year. It was like the latter part of August. And uh, I put a sweater on. And uh, like I had one of them little white T-shirts underneath. Uh, my dad and friends, we used to call them. No, I'm not going to tell you what they call them. That's not appropriate. But I wouldn't be wearing a shirt by itself. Let's just put it that way. So I put that shirt on and then I put the sweater on over top. And by lunchtime, it was like 30 degrees. And I was really regretting my T-shirt choice at that time. And uh, by the time we were done, say it was like 4 o'clock, I got back. I was exhausted. And I spent the next day and a half in bed, went to work Monday. I didn't last like 20 minutes at work, and I just fell on inflatables. Uh, went to the doctor. Oh, you have sunstroke. It took me the whole week to get over that. And I was drinking electrolytes like crazy, trying to get things back to what they should be. Now, and it's a horrible thing, and it can be fatal. And especially back in this day where, you know, you couldn't like, okay, we'll stop at 9-11 and get some Gatorade for everybody, <laughs> you know. No, it was really bad back then. So that was a major issue. And then the other one is called Moonstruck. Uh, and that was, so unlike Sunstroke, where it's physical, this took the mind, struck the mind. In ancient, ancient times, mental illness was thought to be caused by the moon, that the it's the moon's fault. That's where we get the word lunatic from the moon. Someone who's mentally disturbed. I hope nobody here is a lunatic now. All right. So <laughs> I didn't think that would take off like that. But <laughs> hey, right. I'll let everyone consume that information. <laughs> All right. So the whole idea here is that from the moon uh, stroke or the heat stroke or the sun stroke, well, we're subject to attack in our lives. It's going to happen. And we need to bear in mind that God, God guards over us as we go through this life. He's with us to watch over us and guard us from attack and things of that nature. And when the heat's on, he's the shield. He's watching over us. Uh, and then when the attack is in our mind, he's there to help us. And when, and like the, the mind thing is something we like fear, doubt. We deal with those things all the time. You know, uh, as parents, you have fears when the kids are small. And then when the kids are bigger, you still have fears. They don't go away. You know, and the idea is that we shouldn't be caught in the, we should always have concern, right? The idea of fear is you get fear and you're paralyzed. No, we, no, we need to be concerned. We need to be helping. Uh, so that's part of our minds and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how somebody says something off the cuff and it goop, sticks in your head and you can't seem to get it out sometimes. You know, we, we need to understand we need to bring those things to the Lord. He'll protect us. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Whether the attack is in the open or secret, whether it comes at day or at night, you know, be sure that God is aware of what's happening. And he, he wants us to look to him for his protection. He doesn't want us to go doing it ourselves. You know, obviously, as experience comes, we know what we need to do. But the idea is that we're looking to him for the resources. Because on our own, we can't do it. We can't. It's impossible. Our strength level is really low, okay? And we need to go look, look to him. The, the, the greatest gift we have when we have those troubles is to flee to him. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Psalm 19, 91, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Verse number 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and coming in for this time forth and even forevermore. He's preserved thee from all evil. You know, our flesh is evil. 
Now we're redeemed. If we know Christ is Savior, we're redeemed. But our flesh is still the same flesh, right? And there can be times when it explodes like a volcano. Sometimes it could be our actions. Sometimes it could be our words. Uh, we could lash out on people. Or we just think in our heads. We actually don't say it, but we're actually pretty brutal with our thoughts. That's still sin, right? You know, we, if we have bad thoughts about people, that's still sin. And we need to make sure that we're on the right page. And the flesh will, you know, it's depraved. For I know that uh, that in me, this is a Psalm, or sorry, Romans 7, 18, that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So Paul's saved, and he's saying there's nothing good that lies within me. So the idea is that the flesh, you know, it's not me, it's God that helps me do what's right. Hope in him. He saved us, he'll take care of us. You know, I've never have four wonderful children. I never had to teach one of them how to be bad. And neither did Michelle. Some of them might say, oh, Michelle taught them. No, no. They just did it on their own. Because we all have a bent in that direction. Each and every one of us. And I know there's some children who misbehave more, understand that, or get into some bigger things quicker. Yes, yes, I understand. But we all have that bent. And we do it because our flesh likes it. Absolutely. And, and we do it because we get really proficient at it, at doing wrong. Uh, I, I, I've met some people over years, and uh, it's been like when the government's issued out grants or whatever, and um, they're like, oh, if you do this, you can get it twice as much. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not eligible to get it twice as much. What you're talking about is wrong. You know, if I steal from the government, I'm stealing. Still wrong. You know, so the idea is that we got to watch out for that. that that's a bend in us that we got to be, hey, we need the Lord to help us overcome that evil. Uh, you know, and, and look to him. Uh, um, Jude 24, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. The Lord can help us overcome that evil life and give us victory over it. Okay. And there's also evil that comes against us. It's satanic. The, the, the devil's against us. He's a real, he's a real foe. He's not imaginary like he would like you to think. And sometimes as the world would paint him to be. We need to be sober. Vigilant. Because the adversary the devil has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking around. Who's going to be my victim? And I don't know if you ever watched any of those uh, like wildlife shows uh, and you see the lion. He's looking, he's watching all the deer or whatever is running by. He gets the straggler, doesn't he? The one that's not quite walking right or whatever, is a little slower. And bang, quick as that. Got him. Hey, that, hey, that's what he's doing today, too. He's looking for that one to take him down. Thankfully, the Lord's with us and able us to stand against the wickedness and the evil. And uh, we need to look to him for our, uh, to, to help us through this life. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Uh, and then we're preserved for eternity. Uh, the psalmist reminds us the Lord keeps us while we're here. He protects us regardless of the direction of, of the journey. In the sense that by coming out and they're coming in. And then I mentioned this morning, our journeys are all different. We, we all need to be looking to the Lord. We all need salvation. But every one of our journeys is different. Some of you are from the Philippines. Some of you are from India. Some of you are from uh, Nigeria. Some of you from wherever. Your journey is different than mine. Right? We just need to keep looking to the Lord. He'll, he, like coming in, coming out, He's with us. Sometimes, you know, we're, we're coming in, I guess you could say, and we're, we're living close to Him, or walking as we should, and there's other times that we're drifting away, we're going out, but He's still there. You know, when you drift away from God, God hasn't moved. You moved. God hasn't. And He wants, He desires you to come on back, get close to me. That's the best place to be. You want to be as close as you can to Him. He's always faithful, and he'll take care of us. And his ministry, he'll continue for, forever. And we'll, we'll worship the uh, Almighty God for eternity. He, he's there. He's going to help. He's, he's going to help. Sometimes in life, we have troubles, trials, and they overwhelm us. You know, uh, temptations arise within our hearts. Uh, maybe there's a specific time of attack upon your life, and it's from, you know, 
I will say this. Sometimes we say it's from Satan when we do it ourselves, okay? And if we're doing wrong, and if, oh, Satan's attacked. No, you did it yourself, okay? But there is times when the old devil comes against us, and he wants us to see us uh, fail. And and sometimes um, we're looking up. We're at the bottom. We're looking up like, man, this is the worst year ever, our worst week ever, and we just feel like it's all coming apart. Where do I turn? Who's going to help me? Uh, where's my friends? Where's my family? My resources, they, they're not, they're not going to help. And The Lord can help. And that's who we need to go to first. I'm not saying you don't tell your friends, because your friends are, God gave them to you, and they should be part of your support network. You know, tell them what the, what's happening in your life. Get them to pray, or maybe they have a good suggestion. Tell your parents if you're still blessed to have them. Or, you know, just, hey, Lord, help me. Help me. There's a story told of a man who wandered across a frozen river. He got down on his hands and knees. He's slowly going, slowly going. Every every once in a while, he'd stop and, okay, a little bit further, a little further he went. And uh, after a while, I mean, he's hours. It was a big body of water to get across. He was hours every few feet stopping, tapping. His face is turning blue. His hands are getting frozen. And then he hears this rumble. At first he thought, this is it. I've broken the ice. I'm going to go down. And he hears the rumble from behind. He looks back and here's 12 Clydesdale's horses running across the ice with a big, you know, load of lumber on the back and a, and a, a heavy wagon. And whoosh, no time they're across it here. He is on his hands and knees. You know, and so often we're like that man. We're going into life something and we're always going to talk. Well, I wonder if I'll make it. Listen, we're following the Lord. Aren't we going to make it? Yeah, I'm not saying it's always going to be easy. No, no, we're going to have our struggles. And we don't have to, you know, go a few more feet and then tap on the ice some more to see, is, is this really, what's going to happen next? Who knows what's going to happen next? We can really get ourselves caught up with, Oh, if I do this, I might do this, and this might happen, and this. Just take the step. Just take the step. Follow the Lord. He's, and you know what the Lord's saying? Trust me. Uh, sometimes uh, I don't do it anymore because my boys are all way bigger than me now. But I remember like, them jumping off the steps. Come on. Trust me. You know, that childlike faith is what we need to have with our father, too. Trust him. Trust him. Listen, I, I again, we go through hard times, but God doesn't look for our destruction. God wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. And he, we can trust him to be our helper. When it's bad, when your sorrows, when you, the thieves of joy are around the corner, when the bandits of evil are about ready to come upon you, you can trust the Lord to protect you. He's not going anywhere. And he's just as strong as the day that this was written as he is today. He hasn't changed. And we can trust him. He can be your help if you'll go to him. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your word and for this psalm to help us to trust you. I don't know all the battles that people are facing who are here today, but we all face them. Give us your strength. Help us to look to you. The old devil and his minions are looking to destroy, tear down some of our problems we cause ourselves. Lord, help us to look to you for strength, for wisdom, for guidance. And you will never fail. And we're so thankful for our amazing God you are. I pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. You're dismissed.